Hey, this is Zach from Steady Stream and Casios, and we've got a little bit of a different video today. Yes, it's shiny, but it's not an Airstream. It is an eight foot galvanized stock tank, and we're turning it into a pool. In this video, I'm gonna show you how we painted it, how I installed the, the jets, cut the holes, things like that, the pump, what else you can use, saltwater chlorinator if you want, what we use, what we've been using, um, hydrogen peroxide, borax, baking soda, things like that. I'm also gonna show you the vacuum that I bought to clean it. Hope you enjoy. And all the links to all of the products that we've used, if you have any questions, the links are down in the description below. Check them out. First things first is, we don't want it to be this sh as shiny. We don't want it to be so um, seen. So we're gonna paint it. So what we're starting with is the Kills interior exterior primer. It works on galvanized. The next, we'll go with this rust stop. We're going with the flat black look. So that'll look nice. So first things first is we'll paint it. Then once the hardware, the fittings, um, and the pump, things like that, then we'll walk you through those steps. Now that we have our pool in place, it's painted, it's in place, we've got our deck built. I'll show you that in a second. Now it's time to put your um, inlets, your strainer, your jet, you know, things like that. What we're doing, we're just doing a filter pump. We're not going with a saltwater chlorinator because we'll put the link in the description below and uh, just let you read it for yourself. So we're just using a filter pump. Um, we'll put this link in the description below and we're using hydrogen peroxide, food grade hydrogen peroxide and baking soda. And we're gonna, that's what we're gonna try to use that to clean the pool. Um, it's a very small pool, so hopefully it'll work. Um, but so this is the strainer and this is your, uh, your jet. These are not the original that come with the filter pump kit. I bought these separately. Um, the ones that come with the filter pump by Intex, they're a little cheap, but these come with uh, gaskets and seals and things like that, and they screw on the back to get it nice and tight. As you can see right here as well, it's got the gaskets. So I really like these. Um, they fit with the hose that comes with your filter pump. So we'll obviously need hole saws. For the strainer, we need a two inch. And then for the jet, we're gonna need a two and a half inch hole saw. You obviously need some safety glasses. These are the hose clamps that come with the filter pump. Um, you're gonna need, so obviously our pool is round. We don't have any flat spot. So in order to fill the kind of the cracks, I've got polyurethane sealant and some butyl tape. So. And then once I'm done with my holes, these are like new hole saws, so they sh the holes should be pretty smooth, but if not, I'm gonna go around and file them off the any burrs, any things like that. So now that I've talked about that, now it's time to install it. Okay, two and a half inch hole saw, it's on. It'll be the hole for this. Um, this needs to be wherever you, however high you're gonna fill up your water, it needs to be, this needs to be below about an inch, two inches below the water line. So, I'm gonna put it. It can be lower, but. It, yeah, it can be lower. We're gonna put them on this side because we have our pump over here. And according to Intex, your hoses need to be straight. They don't need to be uh, kinked or curled around. Oh, so, with it running all the way over to here, it's gonna be just enough to where the hoses are straight and they're not curled up or kinked or anything like that. So now it's time to drill some holes. Safety glasses on. Two inch hole saw now for the strainer. Um, the strainer needs to be below your inlet. Um, so I'm gonna put it about a little below midway of the pool uh, wall itself. So it's not at the bottom, like trying to collect dirt, things like that. So now it's time to drill the holes out for that. Oh yeah, you'll need a shop vac of some sort. I did a test fit. You can see there's just a little bit of a ridge. Um, so I'll use the butyl and then I'll uh, also use the polyurethane sealant if I feel like it's necessary. 
So, I like how that looks. Looks very snug and secure. And then obviously, go on the back side and put the wing nut and tighten it all up. I'm also doing the same for the strainer. It's putting some butyl tape around it. Do you have any tips for butyl tape? There's really just no tips for butyl tape. I mean, you just kind of obviously want to buy a good quality butyl tape because they've got some that are not good. Um, but this stuff works really, really well. And once it's like done and set, it'll be there for years to come. Now that we've got our strainer and our inlet, uh, the jet, now it's time to put the hoses on, put the hose clamps. The bottom hose from the pump goes to the jet. It's seated nicely. And then we'll use the supplied hose clamps and tighten it. Now that we have that hose, the top hose from the pump will go to the strainer. That one on, it's all the way on. And then we'll do likewise, put the hose clamp on. The addition that I'm going to, that I'm going to add that I forgot about, but I just remembered is um, this little garden hose valve. Here's the drain hole. And so when I add this uh, garden hose valve, what it's going to allow me to do is to hook a hose up to it and run the hose to wherever I want so that if I need, for any reason, I need to drain all the water, it's not just gonna all pull up around here um, and just make a huge muddy mess. That way I make a muddy mess somewhere else further in the yard. So it comes with a little rubber uh, gasket and then it just has a wing nut on the back that you just tighten up. So now it's, uh, I'm gonna use a one inch hole saw on it and that's the way that works. Like I said, we are just using the filter pump and going with hyd hydrogen peroxide in the baking soda route. Um, you could get a salt water chlorinator as an extra um, accessory and use pool salt if you want, or you can uh, just go the chlor chlorine route and get a regular pump, things like that. Um, well, like I said, we'll put the link down in the description below why we are choosing to go the hydrogen peroxide baking soda route um, and let you decide for yourself. So now it's just time to fill it on up and enjoy it. If you've stuck around so far, you know that we're using hydrogen peroxide. This is food grade, 34%. I'll put the link in the description below as well where we got it from. The website that talks about naturally clean pools, um, talks about this and it says for every 100 gallons you wanna add a cup. So this is roughly 700 gallons. This is the eight foot tank. So we'll put about six cups and then just kind of see how it goes. And you six can add, seven. I mean, it's not full. Okay. That's if it was full. Okay. Um, and then we'll look and pH level, things like that Daddy, in a day or two. And so maybe put it into baking soda, some borax. The kids are loving it and they're enjoying it. So now I'm going to put in the hydrogen peroxide. For us to um, clean our tiny pool, I bought a battery powered pool vacuum. This is the Ryobi 18 volt. Um, if you're looking you're like, man, I don't have that battery, don't worry. Because it comes with the battery. Open it up. So it comes with the battery and it comes with a stand that it mounts to. And the stand, like you see, it says touch charge, wireless charging. Um, so as it's mounted on the stand, hanging on the wall, thank you, it'll be charging. So it comes with the battery and the battery is sealed at the enclosure. So you won't have to worry about um, it getting wet. As you can see, it's got the little vacuum part, the little bristles to uh, push up any dirt. This is where all the dirt will go in. This will fill up, this fills up with water immediately. This is your filter. Obviously, you can clean that. Um, and then, you put this on, locks in place. And if you've got a pool, um, 
pull pole for your net, it just slides on right in here. So it rained a couple days ago, heavy storm, it was cloudy, but it's full of dust, debris, dirt, things like that. It needs to be cleaned. So I'll show you how to do that. Okay, first things first, dunk it in the pool, bless you. Then there's a switch. Turn the switch, and you're good to go. So as I said, the pool is cloudy. It just stormed the other day, but you can see all the debris, dirt, and leaves, and things like that. Pine straw fragments. As you can see, all the dust, dirt, debris that was vacuumed up. Um, I know one thing you can do to get all this water out is to like dump it this way. The water comes out, you know, it comes through the filter. But for me, this little bit of water is not going to make my pool like go totally, you know, low. So what I do is I just take it over here to the grass and I just dump it all out. And so then you can still see there's dirt and debris. Um, so I'll go bring that over to the sink or the hose. Filter comes off, then you go and clean that, and then you're ready for your next vacuum session. So this has the touch charge, um, charge mounting station. So comes with these two little um, cutouts, so you can mount it to the wall or wherever you want. Fold this like that, that's like that, and if you come look on the side, it's blinking, which means it's charging. Based on these results, they all three, all the tests look the same. So I'm looking at this, I'm trying to find my range. So that looks about a six. That it's about a seven. So we're looking at probably about a six and a half or a seven, which on pH, that's great. You want to be at seven. Um, if you're low, that means you need to add borax. If you're high, that, mean, that means you need to add and, um, some baking soda. So obviously this is our hydrogen peroxide to clean. This is just a jar we had left over. Um, but this is a uh, 100% organic borax. So at first we were at a five, so I put it in a little bit of borax, and now, like I showed you, we're at a six and a half to a seven. We've had the pool for about a month now, and we haven't had any problems with anything being dirty. Um, the only problem I've had is I didn't realize you were supposed to change the filter out every two weeks, so the jet wasn't running real, really well. I cleaned it. It worked for about a day and then clogged up. Uh, that's the filter for the Intex pump. Um, then I realized that, yes, you're, you're supposed to change it out every two weeks. So I got a new one in. Everything's working great. But as far as the hydrogen peroxide, borax, baking soda thing, it's been super easy. Um, like I said, I haven't had any problems. Pool's been super clean. It's probably easy as well because it's such a small pool. Um, although I have, have heard opinions that the smaller the pool, the more problems you have. Maybe with a saltwater chlorinator or chlorine, um, but with this, we haven't had any problems and we're enjoying it. Take my